Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. In this episode, I want to talk to you about computer dating. Not swiping left or right, I'm referring to inserting dates and time into a worksheet and giving it a custom format. The two ways I'm going to show you are using the Format Cells dialog box and using the text function. These techniques work pretty much the same way in Windows and Mac and in any version you might have. So let's take a look, see how it works. The first thing is to understand how Excel handles dates and time. Every date is a five-digit serial number. That's how Excel keeps track of dates and how you could do calculations like today plus 30 days or next week minus 90 days, something like that. Excel handles the time of day with four to six digits to the right of the decimal. So it would be something like that, point, whatever it is after it. If you remove all formatting, Excel will display dates as these digits, and it's probably something you don't want. Now, if you manually type in a date, the sheet recognizes what it is. Let me just delete that. And maybe I'll just go down to this cell, and I'm just going to type in a date. So let's say if I put in, I don't know, Groundhog Day. Excel recognizes that as a date, and you notice that it's right aligned because it's a number. There's no equal sign necessary because it isn't a formula, it's just a number. Now, there's a shortcut to put in the date. If I want to put in today's date without the trouble of typing it in manually, I could press Control semicolon and enter. If I want to put in the time of day, I press Control shift colon and that puts in the time of day. And by the way, this is the same exact shortcut in Windows and Mac. So on the Mac, you're not using the command key, you are using the control key. Now, whichever way you do it, whether you type it in or use a shortcut, these will not update. Whatever date you insert it, it'll stay that way. So if I open this up next week, next month, whatever, it's going to keep those dates in there that I typed in or use a shortcut for. But what if I do want it to update? Then I have to use a function. If I want to put in the current date so that it updates, I use the today function. Now, there's a set of parentheses, and it requires the parentheses because it's a function, but nothing ever goes in it. Now, let's go use it. Clear off a little bit of space there. And I'm just going to type in equals today with an open and close parenthesis, and it puts it in. And when you're looking at it, you see that right now, it's indistinguishable from the first one where I used the shortcut or up here where I typed it in. So if I open this file, if I save this file and then I open it up in November, December, next year, whatever, it's always going to be whatever that date happens to be. But what if I want to insert the date and the time of day? There's another function to do that. For that, I use the equals now function. And also, because it's a function, it requires a set of parentheses, but nothing ever is going to go in there. So let's go try that. Equals now. Open and close parenthesis. And it gives me the current date and time of day. Notice that's a 24-hour clock. By default, we're going to change that. So what I want this to look like, what I want it to say is Thursday, comma, October 13th, comma, 2022, at... 2.29, or whatever the time it happens to be, p.m. So that's kind of verbose. I'm going to need a little bit more space. Now, I could take column D and make it really wide. Chances are that's not what you will want to do on one of your worksheets. So what I'm going to do instead, first of all, let's just remove this for clarity. I'm going to select a few cells and combine them. So I'm going to select those, and on the Home tab of the ribbon bar, I'm going to click on this button to merge and center. That way we still have our columns of the regular size. So I'm going to go into the format cells dialog box where we format number. And there's two ways of doing it. Also, since I'm still on the home tab, in the number section, I can click this little arrow and that's going to bring me into format cells. Or, let me cancel out for a moment, I can press Control-1 or on the Mac, Command-1 and that brings me into format cells. I'm just going to delete whatever is custom. And notice this is showing me 
that sequence of numbers for the date, a decimal sequence of numbers for the time. So the first thing I want to put in is the day. Like today is Thursday. Now Thursday is a day. So if I type in a single D, notice it puts in 13 because today is the 13th of the month. If I put in a second D, now there's no change, but let's say if this were a single digit day, if this were the fourth or the fifth, that would be the difference between showing you know, four or zero four. If I put in a third D, it abbreviates Thursday, abbreviates the day of the week, put in a fourth D and it spells out the day of the week. Great, so I want a comma, so I'm gonna literally type in a comma. Now I wanna put in the month. Same general ideas with the date. A single M puts in 10. A second M doesn't make a difference because it's a two digit month. If this had still been September, it would be the difference between nine and zero nine. Now, if I put in a third M, it abbreviates October, a fourth M, it spells it out. Now I wanna put in the calendar date. So this is kind of like what we saw a few moments ago. I'm gonna put in a single D. I'm not a big fan of leaving zeros if they're not necessary. Comma, and I wanna put in the year. I always just put in four Ys. So that puts in the year. Now I wanna say at, whatever time of day it is. So I'm literally gonna type the word at, and now I need to put in hours, minutes, and seconds. So I'm gonna put in a single H. Now, whether it's a two digit hour or a single digit, right? Whether it's you know 2 p.m. or 11 p.m. or something like that, um, I'm not a fan of leaving zero, so I'm just gonna stick with a single H. Colon, minutes is a different story. Always put in two Ms for the minutes. And we could put in seconds, so I'm going to put in colon, two S's for seconds. Now, you notice this is still a 24-hour clock, and chances are you don't want it. Maybe you do, but if you don't, how do we get rid of it? What we do, put in space, we type in AM slash PM. So now that converts it to a 12-hour clock. Now I'm going to click OK, and there it is. There's that verbose date. So I said that's going to update. That will update when anything happens. If you change something on the worksheet, if you add something, delete something, if you blink your eyes too hard, it's going to change just about anything. So for example, now we could always look at the minutes and the seconds. So if I go in there and I just type some stuff and hit enter, you notice that changes. If I go and I delete that gibberish, you notice that changes. If you want to force the worksheet to recalculate without doing anything, on a laptop keyboard, you press function F9 on a full size, like external keyboard on a desktop uh, machine, you would press just the F9 by itself. And notice every time I do that, it increments the seconds. So that's pretty cool. Now let's see how you can use the same and other formatting codes to apply formats to numbers on the worksheet. So here's a sample of some common formats that you might wanna apply. And to do that, we're going to use the text function. Let me show you how that works. So with the text function, the syntax is equals text, and there's two arguments. What's the number that you're formatting, and what's the format going to be? And as an example, say k equals text. Let's format whatever is the contents in A5, and I want to spell out the month. So I put in four Ms. Notice this is in double quotes. You have to put the format in double quotes, otherwise Excel is gonna throw an error because it's text that you're putting into a formula. And the result of this might be something like January. So let's go do some of these. So for the first one, I want commas, no decimals like you can see in the sample. So I'm gonna say equals text, open up the parenthesis. There's the number that I wanna format, comma. So now I'm gonna put in double quotes, pound sign, comma, one, two, three more pound signs, close a quote, close a parenthesis, and enter it. So for this one where I want commas and two decimals, I'm gonna say equals text, open up the parenthesis, click the cell, comma, open up the quotes, and this one I wanna put in zero, comma, one, two, three zeros, point, zero, zero, and now close a quote, close a parenthesis. Now I'm gonna skip over these for a moment. See, we have all sorts of options 
to do. I'm not going to do every single one in front of you, and I'll show you why you're going to have all this anyway. So let's say we want the month, like I mentioned before. So I'm going to say equals text. Open up the parenthesis. So here is the current date, comma. And even though this has the month, the day, and the year, when I open up the quote and I put in one, two, three, four M's like that, notice it formats the month and it ignores the day and it ignores the year. Now, here's some that a lot of people have trouble with. Let's say leading zeros. Every zip code in my home state of New Jersey, and I believe in most of New England, the zip codes start with a zero, and that trips a lot of people up. I've actually seen some people put in a capital letter O, and that makes things even worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say equals text, open up, hit that comma, and now it quotes one, two, three, four, five zeros, and close that up. Or let's say social security number equals text, open up, hit the row number, comma, open up the quotes, and it's going to be one, two, three pounds, dash, two pounds, dash, one, two, three, four pounds. And there you go. Now, as I said, I'm not going to make you sit through all of this because I have a handout for you. To save you the trouble of having to write all of these down or to watch me doing every single one of these, I created this PDF that you can have for free and it has all of these examples. The link to download it is right here on this page below the video you're watching right now. And it has all of those samples already done for you. I think Microsoft did a very efficient job of creating these formatting codes. You don't need many of them and they do a lot. They're very flexible. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.